For a self-defender, it's just as important to know when not to shoot as it is to know when to shoot. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Arkansas. Here we're going to see a couple of police officers who are going to save the life of a man who is trying to commit suicide by cop. We're going to learn important lessons here about how difficult it can be to take a shot when you have bystanders in close proximity. Also about the split second decision making that it takes to know when to shoot and when not to shoot. And also about working with your partner to end a threat in the best way possible. If you go read the news story on this one, you'll see that officers have been called here for a welfare check and right after they showed up, they were told by dispatch that the man had said that he would respond with gunfire to any officers who came. So this is a very dangerous situation. We do have badge cam audio, so let's listen in and then we'll come back and learn some lessons. Put it down, Marcus! Put it down! Marcus, drop it! Drop it, Marcus! Put it down! No! Please shoot me! I want to die! Please kill me! Please, please. Let it go, Marcus! Please take me out! Let it go, Marcus! Taser, taser, taser! Take me out, please! Please, oh. Let it go! Down. Let it go! Down. Take me out, please! Take me out! 342, Com please Center! Me out. Shots fired! Please take me out! <laughs> I don't well, want to live! I don't want to live! Alright, let's go back and think about some significant lessons. The officer hears gun, 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 and now he comes around. And this is the first thing he sees. He sees this, you know, very quick scenario that his partner is calling gun, and so he has his gun out and in hand. But you got to think about in that moment, okay, I can only take a shot if I absolutely have to and if I can safely. So we see him get his hands on his gun and he starts giving commands, drop it, drop it, drop it. But look at what his shot is here. As we stopped it right here, he, had, he would have had to have made that shot in incredibly close proximity in a moving situation to his partner. And since his partner has his hand on the muzzle and he's not an immediate threat, the officer decides not to take that shot. Now, as he brings that guy closer, he's like, hey man, drop it, drop it, drop it, but he's not gonna be able to get on this guy and his partner, thankfully, is wrestling him fairly okay for the moment. He is not under threat for the moment. Now, he's not at a significant advantage because the uh, the perp here has his body between him, his rifle and the guy who's trying to take it away. But thankfully, now they're able to work together. Now, the guy said, kill me, kill me, kill me. And thankfully, the officers didn't in this instance. They realized they could get control of him and could get control of the rifle without endangering themselves significantly, and so they don't. Now, we did hear the officer use the taser here, and the taser was an effective tool. Now, of course, you don't use a taser against a deadly threat unless you have d uh, deadly force coverage that's already there and you can use it safely. In this case, they did. It was able to get that off him. And I am very grateful to these officers who thought quickly, who didn't take shots when they weren't safe to take, and were able to take this guy into custody and then get him the help that he needed. He will be going to prison but thankfully get him the help that he needed. And that's the kind of thing that our police officers do every day, which is why I am pro-law enforcement here at Active Self-Protection, and we're grateful for the work that they did. Here, they, they worked together well as a team, they were safe with their firearms, they defended themselves, and they respected life for the person who needed some help. They covered their ASP.